What if I told you that we could go and take a design like this, something very simple, kind of like a wireframe, then use a tool called ASCIIflow.com that will allow us to quickly draw out the same kind of wireframe structure, import that into ChatGPT, and it will then output HTML, CSS for us. Well, you probably think I'm a liar, but we're gonna do that right now. All right, so here is the design. You can kind of look at this as like a wireframe or just a starting point, essentially. We do have some colors here. This is in Figma, and it's just for our references to grab some color schemes so that we can communicate with ChatGPT some basic styling. So here's a desktop with three cards, and then here's mobile. We're gonna make this responsive as well. So what we need to do is take this general structure and recreate it uh, in something called ASCIIflow.com. All right, so it's a free tool and it allows you just to create an output ASCII art essentially. So what we can do is choose boxes, left click here just to create kind of like the website website layout here on desktop. Uh, we can choose text and we'll go ahead right here and specify um, this is my snazzy uh, headline. All right, like that, that's good. We'll do a sub headline right here. This is also my sub headline right here. Awesome. And then we'll go ahead and take the boxes. We're gonna have three boxes. So one will be like right here. One will be like right here. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. It may not be even. I don't think it's entirely too important. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the text tool. We'll say card one, card two, and card three. Finally, we'll have some more text down here. This is a footer text section. That's it. Now we click on this download button and we choose copy to clipboard. Next up, we go over to our GPT-4. Okay, so this part's real important. This is the prompt engineering or the prompt construction section because uh, if we were just to output this and say, go ahead and make the website. Here is an ASCII representation of it. It's not going to give us something very you know, close to what we have. But just to show you, let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say, uh, let me zoom up here. This is an ASCII representation of a website layout. Please make it in HTML and CSS. So let's go ahead and then paste it and hit enter. Now it's still uh, producing the CSS below, but take a look at this HTML. It's actually really solid. Uh, it knew to wrap everything in a container, which is probably representative of the outline that I, I chose. Um, it knows H1. It used, it, used, it used it H2 this time. When I first did this, it used a paragraph tag. That's not a big deal. Div class card container right here. Uh, that's exactly what I would call it myself. So that's awesome. Div class card, I would call it that as well. I may use an unordered list instead of a div element, but still uh, footer down here. I probably would wrap that in paragraph text, but still pretty accurate for what it produced. Now, sometimes what happens if you ask it to generate a bunch of information in one prompt, it will just kind of error, or not error, but it'll just stop producing the content. So what you can do is ask a follow-up question Please finish the CSS starting with the card container rule set. There we go. All right, so here is the CSS. And so what I'm gonna do is open up Visual Studio Code and paste both of these in. So here is the HTML that it gave me, and then here is the CSS. Here is the result. All right, so it didn't use the colors, obviously, because it didn't know about the colors yet. We have to communicate it with some follow-up prompts. But you can see that it's actually a pretty good job. It didn't make it responsive because we didn't ask it to make it responsive. But nonetheless, this is actually pretty solid here. So we can ask it to fix some of these things in a follow-up prompt.
Please make the following adjustments to the CSS. Make it mobile first. Make the design responsive with a minimum width media query at 600 pixels. The website background should be the purple color and the website text should be white. The card should have a white background with slightly rounded corners and the card text should be black and give the cards a minimum height of 300 pixels. Remove the border. And finally, the font family for the website should be Nunito. Left the line the footer text and get rid of the border above it and give the H2 element a normal font weight and make it slightly smaller. And hit enter. All right, let's copy the new CSS. Let's go back. I have not checked this out yet. Paste it. Now, I know one thing that it didn't include is the new Nito font family. I have it already installed on my computer though. Otherwise, you could ask it to output the uh, import code for you. And let's go ahead and check it out. All right, that's a lot better already. We could f do another follow-up asking it to center horizontally and vertically the card uh, one, two, and three type. Let's go ahead and see if it is responsive. I'll look at that. Automatically stacks. It made the subheadline regular font weight. I uh, it left aligned the footer section. It gave the colors exactly what we wanted. It gave the oopsie wrong thing. It gave this here rounded corners. It pretty much nailed everything that we wanted it to do. So what makes this really exciting is obviously this isn't a great use case uh, having to use ASCIIflow.com. However, it kind of goes to show once they open up the multimodal functionality such as the image recognition, then it could potentially almost nail everything exactly as we want it out of the box if it's able to do just this based on ASCII and having a few follow-up prompts. So the future is very exciting. Hopefully you follow along. Make sure to subscribe here if you haven't yet, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy.